In Germany, the world's tallest wind turbine is being constructed, longer than three NFL football fields, claiming to generate 40% more energy than traditional turbines. Wind turbines are getting larger and more efficient. Innovations are constantly being made to perfect this technology, from recyclable turbine blades to wooden turbine towers. All this will be discussed today as we take a deep dive into the revolutions of wind energy. Before we begin, I'd like to give you a brief overview on the engineering involved in a wind turbine. So to make this simple today, we'll be discussing the most popular type of turbine, the three blade horizontal axis wind turbine. However, there are a lot of variations there's a one blade, a two blade turbine, there's also a vertical axis turbine. We could literally dedicate a whole video on the different types of turbines available and why we prefer the three blade design, which is a video I'll be doing in the future. So if that sounds good guys, let me know in the comments below and subscribe to the channel. Anyway, back to wind turbines. So unlike the traditional windmills, which worked by drag, Modern turbines are based on maximizing the aerodynamic force of lift. To keep this simple, if we were to see a cross-section of a turbine blade, it works by the same aerodynamic principles of an airplane wing. You see, one side of the blade has more curvature to its profile. This is intentional to create a longer path for the wind to travel. As the incoming wind is split over the two surfaces of the blade, the air passing over the curved surface must travel farther to keep up with the air flowing from the flat side. The faster flowing wind over the curved surface creates a pocket of low pressure air. This difference in pressure forces the blade to move towards the low pressure side. Quick fun fact by the way, wind is generated by the uneven heating of the Earth's surface by the Sun. Because Earth is made of different surfaces, you know, land and water, the Earth absorbs the Sun's heat at different rates. This creates a difference in air temperature in different regions. Warm air currents rise, resulting in colder air to move in and take its place. These cycles are what create the wind currents that power these massive turbines. In October of 2024, the foundations for the world's tallest turbine have begun construction. A question I get asked occasionally is why do we keep making bigger turbines instead of just installing more of them in the first place? Well, you see, there's a catch. Wind speed and consistency tend to increase the higher the altitude. This is basically because at these altitudes, where wind turbines are being installed, there are less obstacles such as buildings, trees, mountains and other vegetation. And now we're not just building turbines on land, there's a whole industry dedicated to offshore wind energy. With floating wind turbines opening new paths into this industry's potential, companies like Stitzdal are revolutionizing the way we view offshore wind entirely. Floating foundations such as this allow us to install turbines in waters of depths never imagined. As I've already mentioned, turbines are constantly scaling up. But the larger the turbines, the more waste they generate at the end of their lifetime. Much of the components of a wind turbine have been successfully recyclable and reusable for years. However, the blades have been an issue with most of them ending up in landfills. Although Siemens Gamesa have developed a recyclable blade. By altering the resin used in the composite materials of the blades, they can now be dismantled after their lifetime, enabling most of the raw materials to be reused. Another issue is the gearbox, or more specifically, the method we convert the high torque, low rotation speed of the turbine rotor to the high rotation speed required in the generator. 
to match the desired frequency by the grid. You see, the preferred method so far has been the use of a multi-stage gearbox, increasing the rotation speed from 15 to 20 RPM up to 1800 RPM. However, the components such as gears, shafts and bearings undergo intense stresses and loads. This induces fatigue, wear and buckling over the years. Recent studies have also shown that gearbox issues have contributed to the most significant downtime in a wind power plant. There is, however, an alternative, which is to skip the gearbox entirely and connect the rotor to the generator directly. But for this to be possible, we need to change some properties of the generator. You see, the generator needs to match the frequency required by the grid which in the US is 60 Hz and in the EU is 50 Hz. If the frequency fluctuates by even 1 Hz, it would be catastrophic to the power grid. A way around this issue in wind turbines is to increase the number of poles of a generator. With more pairs of poles, the frequency is increased without having to increase the rotation speed of the turbine. This allows us to couple the turbine rotor to the generator directly. The exact term is a direct drive wind turbine generator. As this design has substantially fewer moving parts, it is more robust and needs overall fewer maintenance over its lifespan. Although it does have some issues, for one it is significantly more expensive than a conventional gearbox, and the use of neodymium, a rare earth metal, poses some issues. For one, its extraction contributes to environmental concerns and secondly, most of the commercially available neodymium is mined in China, therefore dominating the market entirely. A company in Sweden is, in my opinion, challenging the way we think about wind turbines entirely. Modvion, excuse me if I butchered the name, has developed wooden wind turbine towers. These towers are manufactured by modular segments, which are transported on site and assembled using glue. This design eliminates the need for thousands of bolts requiring routine inspection in conventional steel towers. And the wood itself captures carbon. The overall carbon footprint of wooden towers is approximately 30% less than conventional steel towers. I simply love shining a light on innovations such as these. It's exciting to even imagine the potential and, to be honest, today we've barely scratched the surface. I haven't even mentioned coupling wind energy to energy storage and the production of green hydrogen from wind. I have so much to discuss and explain in upcoming videos. So if that sounds good, as always, let me know what you think in the comments below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.